2018. This is a commissioner's court meeting. It's being held directly after our 915 commissioner's court special meeting. The meeting is called to order. Agenda item number two, review and discuss Justice Center design options from P. Gal. So, Commissioner Mallet, Commissioner Cox, uh, Michael, I'll let y'all take the, the lead on this, if you will, please. One more, The uh, building committee met, and, and uh, I guess it was kind of talked about, too, about reducing the number of, I guess from the very get-go, we had a discussion that we needed two district courtrooms, and for some reason that was really not a need to have actually two district courtrooms. So uh, I got with uh, Mr. Lloyd about uh, putting that into it and bringing that to us now to, to shrink it down to uh, and give us some new prices as well um, with what we can do for the different scenarios. Uh, and I guess I'll just go ahead and turn it on. Okay, uh, I'm Michael Lloyd with PGALF Tech. Everybody here knows me, but I'm certainly state the name for the record. So I did talk to Commissioner Mallet, and I'm here to, to present the floor plan showing one district courtroom, the county court at law, and then, sorry, uh, broke my train of thought. Then there's the commissioner's courtroom, which you see on the right side, which doubles as JP court as well as grand jury. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, the DA's <coughs> office in there, supporting chambers for each courtroom. There is a jury deliberation room for each courtroom. Hey, can, do you mind kind of color coding this as you tell what's, what's what for us, please? Certainly. Um, so, well, let's start with the entry. We have a secure entry, and then the back is generally going to be a staff entry. But we've got a secure entry, so the whole building is secure. So we'll have x ray machines and magnetometers here for keeping the courthouse secure. The county court at law is this court here, and the district court is this court here in the paint. County Court at Law, it has seating for about 50 some odd in, in the public seating area. And the district is up, up or over 100, 120. Uh, they both have the larger jury boxes. Uh, <coughs> the difference really in the footprint is that the County Court at Law has conference rooms, which also serve as uh, sequestering some families privately so that there's uh, some separation between defense and prosecution families and things like that. Um, and do, the, the blue courtroom, does do the restrooms and all of that that are blue behind it, closest to you, those three, no, a, a, that there is that color coordinated because that goes in with the county court of law. Is that the way you have uh, it? Yes. Color? So this county court of law is uh, their chambers. Okay. And support staff. Okay. And this kind of salmon color is the bailiffs that are responsible for jury security and court security, and on behalf of the sheriff's department. Okay. So their their staff is there. And uh, uh, they can keep an eye on the jury room. When the when jury's in sequestered, they need to be uh, monitored. Okay. This whole back corridor, you see where I put a star here and a star there? Yes. That would be a secure corridor by card key that only staff can go, the general public can actually go back there. That's the staff corridor. So, the jury room that belongs to County Court of Law is, a, is this one here. And there's some restrooms that are for a jury and they can double as a staff as well. And 
that's on that suite. So prisoners are taken from the jail, taken through a secure, on gray, covered walkway. And then, there's a, then there's a secure vestibule to get into the building. You'll see these little, those little squiggly lines there. It's a secure metal partition that can, it's a pocket that comes across. So when the tr prisoner transfer occurs, there's there's no chance of the prisoners escaping into the back door. Those little uh, accordions will come across and lock down. The prisoner is taken into the holding cell uh, for, we call it day holding, just for the duration of, of the courtroom. They could load eight to 10 prisoners in there for the docket at hand. And then when the prisoners are secure, then those accordions go back and it's an open open corridor and it's really just, it's, un, it's unnoticed, it's a pocket. So district courtroom, their deliberation, there's a jury restroom, uh, restrooms that I've got one staff and one district restroom and with some advice for some early discussions, it, it, it maybe it's best suited that that door goes out to the corridor, so it's a staff restroom, and there can be men's and women's, and it's maybe a better distribution of, of restrooms for the staff. And then district judge's office and, and their chamber support staff are to the end. Um, it would be my intention that this prisoner transfer, it be covered and it have certainly secure walls, and I'd like it to be invisible from either side. So from the parking lot view, you, you're not gonna see prisoners transferred. From someone's office, you're not gonna see prisoners transferred. From the jury deliberation, you're not gonna see prisoners transferred. It will all be. Um, so it's covered and inside. Yeah, it would probably open to the air. We have a wall some secure chain link and then a cover, but not condition space. Okay. And that's just to get to the 40 second walk across the, do you, the, the What Do you know what the, I guess this is all subjective right now, but what is the proposed distance from, from the sheriff's, from the jail to the courthouse? We're about 100 feet. 100 foot, okay. So the next space in green is the DA's office. Um, that space is, is basically unchanged since you've seen it last. Uh, John's pointed out a couple of things that we can tweak or the copy bars can be into some space that we, we modify that a little bit and inadvertently reduce one office so it could create a discrepancy between two similar staff members having different size offices. But some of those things we can clean up if we can improve the big picture here. So that's the DA's office. Uh, coming back to the entry, there's Commissioner's Court, JP Grand Jury Courtroom. We have about 60 spots there in the proceeding. It can um, serve all those functions. And directly behind that's the JP's office. Um, we do have a direct connect in the back or, or walk, walk around, that's a discussion we'd have to see, is it best suited to have a, a, a back door or not? But that's kind of a minor detail. So JP staff, now this clerk's office is something new that uh, the clerk's office hasn't seen yet. In, in this fashion, which or, this, pardon me? Which clerk? It's a combined uh, concept in that it would be a space that could be designated for the two different clerks that are really court related there to support court functions, but the main clerk's offices that you have today would remain uh, in their current location for, they could be, uh, we talked about phase two, when that phase two comes on, then they could be moved, but in this concept, getting to a, that eight million range, showing a clerk's 
function to serve the courts. So that's something we, we need to sit with both departments and really see what are the what are the core necessities that would maybe necessitate um, two maybe two staff per per department there to support the, to support the court dockets um, in a permanent position or maybe they just move over for the day or, or during certain times. It's almost a hoteling term. That's what it's kind of a shared office of the term of hoteling. It's a, a touchdown spot. So that's the idea behind this, and I, I know it's new to you guys, but um, I thought with with being remote, that might be an encumbrance on the clerks to haul the files and support uh, the court cases. So maybe it's a good idea uh, that that you guys can discuss either here in this forum or after I leave. Uh, so lastly, this is more uh, building support. I've got two, two restrooms that serve the general public. There's a main electrical switch gear room that comes off the back, the fire riser, we're gonna have a sprinkler building. Uh, and then the IT director, storage, and the server, this is gonna be the IDF and MDF room support all the technology in the building. And then I've got a break room. It's uh, 217 square feet, as you see there. That would be uh, a place for the staff to have, have breaks. And then uh, Al's party room there for management support and supplies. Now, you'll, you'll notice these corridors. Um, we purposely left some pathways so that when phase two comes on we have some nice connector points to make hallways that would connect to the next phase with minor interruption to this, this current phase so in all this this square footage is 21,745 square feet it's 21,745 and the, the goal, from my understanding, is that you want to be at the eight million range. So, if we've had some, our cost estimator was, has been conservative. He's been pushing in the four hundred range. So, if you're at four hundred bucks a foot, which I think we can be cheaper, um, that's eight point six million, eight point seven, three fifty a foot. Is seven million six hundred and ten thousand. Is what again? Seven million six hundred and ten thousand. That's at three hundred fifty dollars a foot. I, I, we, I think what we we've, we've talked about a certain quality of building that can be maintained well. Um, that's going to have it efficient to operate. Uh, that's a, it's an institutional building. That's not going to give you issues ten years down the road. You want a, an investment, and uh, you, you, this kind of money isn't spent every year. So you want to have a good building. So I think we we want to maintain uh, a, a budget range in the three hundred and fifty to four hundred, and that will get you at that eight million. Um, I think there's cheaper ways to go to get you at maybe a. 300 bucks a foot but then we're doing a metal building metal roof and what what's, what's your proposed exterior on this that or what would be your proposed exterior uh, breaking some cast stone trim on majority of the of the public viewed sides we could on on certain back back facade here that is maybe not seen by anybody but the staff parking lot we can go to metal panel and, and save some money there but the predominant view, certainly from here, all the way around to this corner, would be uh, a masonry building. And we do a, a proper steel frame building with a flat roof. Um, it would give us uh, air-cooled chillers that are economical to operate, which is Al's um, uh, ben, uh, preference. Is a flat roof a good roof for yeah. this world? Certainly, you can get the right. It's just it's a matter of what you spec. Um, it 
you want to put the proper uh, protection pads on there for, for maintenance. Um, but so the maintenance staff can walk up and not damage the roof. I know, I know we're not worried about snow build up here in this part of the world, but I mean, just, I guess a flat roof with water drainage and how you get it off and that sort of thing is, right. is I, that an issue in five years or 10 years? No, I would put a center ridge down the middle and I would shed it to each side and I have internal drains. So it's not flat, flat at some point, there's a little bit of a pitch to it for the runoff or? It's quarter inch per foot. Quarter inch per foot, okay. Uh, would be the recommended slope. So it, it's, I would spec a, a good roof where um, this area has been, if you remember there's a bad hail storm in College Station area several years ago and now that hail zone has dipped down. I don't think it's quite here, but we might look at upping the roof quality to make sure it's hail resistant. But there was a bad one this spring. Well, I'm having my roof replaced within uh, the next few weeks because of the hail. Got hail. Yeah. So that's something that we, this region that we're we're monitoring as the right spec. I've got a, a roof at AM I'm specking that's going to have that hail resistant FM Global criteria for, for hail resistance. That's our one. Can I ask, uh, and I hope it's appropriate, your crystal ball phase two, do you know how many square foot phase two would then be? I, I think then we were, we were in the 40,000 when we were at, at Christmas Day when everybody <coughs> went everything. So I think we could, we, we've left room on the side plan. If you see, it's kind of hard for everybody else to see, but I, I would think we could be another 15 to, 20,000 square feet. Is this it right here? Yes, that, that's the zone. So our expansion, we would leave to be in that zone there. And what, was, um, what could it accommodate? How many square feet on the expansion zone? That would be about 15,000. I think we can we can tweak the, the separation to the jail to make sure we master plan it right, and we can we can talk about that. Um, if, if this plan or, or some um, variation of it is approved for us to develop, we can make sure that we we list exactly what phase two square footage allows in the master plan. One thing that is it was kind of a sweet spot of being too close to the jail and being far away from it. If it's too close, then it, the building doesn't really have its own kind of presence. Um, and it's too far, then, then it pinches how much expansion you have. So um, we, can go, we can go through that and, and make sure everyone's on board with what a phase two expansion encompasses. Um, there, there's, we've also, since it Pull it back. There is, there is room there as well. And just to remind everybody, um, I think one thing I would recommend during bidding as an ad alternate for the the road that would go from this corner of the parking lot to the highway, I'd like to put that as an ad alternate because we we could function off the primary driveway that comes into the sheriff's and come in here. And that would just give us a buffer uh, as an ad alternate, if, if you want to consider that. Um, so I've got public parking, a, a drop-off area, and this was going to be a secure staff. Dumpsters would be back here, and this little pad site would, was going to be a, a metal building that could be for uh, maintenance, maintenance shed. That's just the pad side and we'd rough the utilities to it but this this project doesn't uh, build that uh, building at this point mm -hmm. but that's something you could you can go to bid pretty quick on a metal building kind of spec and almost do it as a uh, almost a written request for bid on that if you get the parameters for mm -hmm. 
put some padding in it. Both sides. Um, if I remember, let's see, that's probably 60 by 40. Now, the site, remember the site work, um, we've got that big hill there, and that hill is all that expansive soil that we're going to scrape off. Um, and we were, gonna, we're counting on taking the, all the clay and depositing it on your property just north of the site instead of hauling that off and having to call the cost. Mm -hmm. um, that, not having the haul cost would be the most economical way to deal with that with that dirt. Um, and then we get to a, a finished floor that would be the same or maybe a foot higher I think than the current jail finished floor elevation. And then all the there's a swale we're going to make around as the, the hill goes up still and we cut into it and all the parking lot drainage with surface drain down a, a gully south here and here that go out to the highway. These dollar amounts per square footage, um, do that, does that include any furniture or is that just the building? That includes the courtroom, built-in millwork, and courtroom furnish the courtroom furnishings. It doesn't include the furniture for all the departments. Um, in the next phase, we can budget that for you if, there, if you want to go say which departments need new furniture and what departments don't. We can help you through that that pricing. But it includes security cameras and. Um, Technology to support uh, to support the building. It would include millwork that we put a, a built-in counter that we'd have a posted sheriff sentry there um, to monitor the, the incoming and outgoing traffic. Now, is there going to be another entrance for the employees other than that main entrance? Yeah. I'd really like to keep staff in this entrance here and really leave this as um, emergency egress only. A, a lot of courthouses, I might have said this before, all the all all staff come through the main entrance. If you're doing a federal court, all staff come through that main entrance and they're observed. The the U.S. Marshals say, yeah, come on through, it's, it's fine, but it gives the ability of, of that century there to keep an eye on who's coming in and who's coming out. Um, and you don't want any piggybacking, you wouldn't bring your mother in the back or something because it's easier. It, that would be a policy that you'd have to go through about court security. I, I'm not going to hold you to this, even though we have it on tape and the world will see it. <laughs> if, fa if phase two was 15,000 square foot, okay, mm -hmm. and you built it in the same fashion that you built what you have there, what do you think the cost on that would be? I think we'd get cheaper per square foot. Sure. For sure, because you're not having the cost of the courtroom. Sure. Uh, and then some of the infrastructure. So I think you could be in the 300 range there. Times, versus so that's what? 4.5 million, 45 million more. Yeah. So if you did 8.7, if you did 8.7, and you did another five, so you're looking at 13 and a half, less than 14 million, or around no yeah. more than 14. And those are kind of some of the numbers we were looking at before in, in May. We were in that 12 million. Well, the 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 contract that Judge Lamont signed. And I, and I guess it's a contract that was signed. The original scope was a one-story 35,000 GSF building, and the estimated construction cost of the project was seven and a half million. And now we're coming in at 21 
746 and about 8.7 and then to do the other I mean I, I, I said I mean I don't know I guess what what changed between September of last year and September of this year I know we've gone through a lot of designs and like you said at Christmas time we kind of had a full-blown ballpark with two district courts and all yeah. of that I think what changed I think the number of courtrooms had changed I think steel costs have gone up tremendously um, I think we can maybe the quality of the building I think we can get closer to that number like I said if we go more bare bones but I don't think maybe that's the kind of building you want I, well, I, I, I'm just speaking for me I, I don't necessarily want to have a bare bones look I mean you think back to 1893 when they built the courthouse that we have now I don't think that matched the terrain with the main street and the buildings and commerce and everything that was in Anderson there they had to have a little bit of vision and I would hope we as a court have some vision there's expense or a cost associated with that vision but uh, I, I like the idea Mary of paying for it all at once but I'm not opposed at looking at our options also because if, if this is if this other 15,000 square foot kind of brought down is 325 a square foot now or $300 a square foot and we hold off two years we hold off three years we hold off five years to do it what's it what's it good I and mean, you don't have a crystal ball I get it but you know if you just look at inflation and things what's it going to cost us then well escalation is probably in the five percent per year range mm -hmm. um, judge I agree with you <clears throat> I mean on this scenario we're still back to this the plan that was presented at Christmas roughly around 40,000 square feet it said 17 million dollars and that's basically what these figures are going to come out at phase one and phase two it's my understanding we have a limited fund balance set aside for this project and right now the county is debt free we we're debt free we don't have any of our budget going to any type of debt service so I think it behooves us to keep that in mind going forward with some of these these plans I don't necessarily know I mean uh, it, it's certainly a necessity it seems like but I don't necessarily know if this is we're kind of in the same boat we were just smaller well I I guess what I'm asking what I'm what I'm suggesting is that we explore all of our options let's be open-minded about this uh, I'm not one for debt either I paid off my home and my land last year and I feel real doggone good about that but it also took me 15 years to, to do it so and I'm not saying the county needs to incur 15 year debt that's not something we're looking for but I know it's kind of the pay me now or pay me later Michelle on the front of servants, I guess, actually, on the clerk spot there um, in that drawing, if that's just a float back and forth, I think we're just getting rid of one problem for another because it's if we're going to be housed there and your judges are going to be housed there, then if that, if the clerk's offices would stay here, for example, then we're having to go all the way to the hill for files back and forth. Um, daily it's difficult enough being on the third floor and coming down and grabbing files and packing them all the way back up and we would be going back and forth between buildings I waste so much time in my day going back and forth between the clerk's offices right now um, that's a, a just a huge consistent problem and then I mean you're looking at vehicles you're looking I mean are we gonna have a rudder and there's so many more problems that would come in to having the courts completely separate from the clerks um, and I just wanted that 
Well, and, and I think the logistics is something that, for our day-to-day -day operation, is something that we need to take into consideration. Uh, and you know, if we can build what you what is phase one, we can do that for eight six or eight seven. Let's let's start let's start building tomorrow, and we can be debt free. But is that the best decision for us as a county to make at this time? What yeah. would the cost be if you took out the um, building out of the courtrooms? Took the building out? The, the, the build out to, to shell them? Yeah. Well, but we have other options that could work. be cheaper. That's what she's asking. Oh, um, yeah, the mill work. work. The mill work. Um, require other things to come with it, but I would think two to 400000 Per courtroom. Per courtroom. We we had a scheme where the if you remember the clerks, the two clerks came over, and that was a uh, that was probably in the twenty five thousand square foot range. We've, we've got that scheme. I, can, I think you might have sent that. Where you got it the last? Yeah. But I guess we could change. I think originally you had two two entrance points too from the jail on that scheme as well right. because we had talked about you know having a build out for a second uh, yeah, district that court. Extra, the second district court out. Um, that certainly saved us for footage mm -hmm. uh, and gotten us to uh, an on point project here. So if you're able, if you wanted to go outside of the eight million plus range to get into the ten, then we could look at some of the prior schemes with just two courtrooms um, to get a more court-supported building. Mm -hmm. I have a question about something you mentioned a while ago. Today's, I've been at most of these meetings, I might have missed one or two, but today's the first time I've ever heard a discussion about the corridor from the sheriff's office to this building not being an enclosed condition corridor. Did I understand you correctly that you're now talking about it not being? In a, some prior discussions we had, we had that tunnel, correct? And that would have been in on grade, I mean below grade. Okay. So maybe the prior. The prior meetings, we took the tunnel away. Okay. And that's that's when it became an open air, open air but secure prisoner transfer path. How much how much difference in cost are you going to be talking about to just make it an enclosed condition corridor? I can, I can. That's what needs to happen. They don't need to be having to deal with weather and inclement, and it's safer and it's more secure. There's no reason for that not to just be an enclosed brick concrete wall. I, I don't get the logic of that at all. I mean, you've got security reasons still that you got to deal with. You're just having a fence, and you're going to have to put up another perimeter fence. I was going to put a roof over it, a metal roof, and have walls on the side, so it would it would be out of the out of the range. It's just to save some money for the. So there would be no way for rain to get in it. No way for blowing rain. Hard blowing rain, we have to have a real good overhang. It, it wouldn't be totally void of getting wind blown rain in. But you're putting walls up too? I was going to do a precast fence walls behind the secure fence or in front of the secure fence. So, so to speak to my original question, how much cost would you be talking about to just enclose it and make it a conditioned space? Um, Is that what? Okay. I, I wouldn't think it maybe hundred thousand or so to air conditioner and insulate it properly. I, I've never, I've not seen one in another county that's where it's all one thing where you end up having to take them outside in any way. It's they're all 
price right. inside. Okay, that's a good point. You, you can look into that if that's the. And then you get, by the way, I realize we don't have a lot of winter here, but if you get any kind of moisture on that concrete slab, now you've got to deal with ice, and if an inmate falls, you're going to get sued, and that just seems like a bunch of problems that are unnecessary. Okay. Also, in the green area where you talked about the hotel and the shared space, how many square feet is that? <clears throat> it's 685 plus 157, so we're about the eight. Yeah, it's long. 842. Looking at this, there's really not any room for them to store files in that area. Is that correct? I think we can add some files. That's 843. Um, it depends on how many staff members are, are deemed appropriate for that concept of shared space. Um, if it's just two per department, then I think we can carve out a file cabinet. Right here we had um, some filing, which is this little space in front of the three counters positions. Um, and then there's a copier and we could have had files there. But, um, since this is all new to you, then we would need to have a little work session to, to program that right if, if the concept of that is um, palatable. Michael, is the parking that you have proposed here, is that included? Yes, sir. That's included in the, the, the 8.7 million? Yes, sir. Okay. Would you, Mr. Rosenstein, would you, what does it cost to borrow $5 million? And what are the options on how you pay it? Yes, sir. Um, no, those guys don't have it. I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to let him take the stand here? <laughs> if, yeah, if, well, just, if, yeah, just, if you don't mind, just give us, or come on up together. But, you know, what are some of the options? And just from an exploratory discussion. I don't know, maybe catching you cold, but this uh, is your okay. business. Thanks again, uh, Ben Rosenberg, U.S. Capital Advisors. I'm sorry. I, I was here last time in May. We talked about different options on financing instruments and times and uh, the available, the required a vote, not a vote, and all those type of things. Uh, do you want to go back through all that? Or uh, you asked specifically about cost. Cost would be estimated on... Um, it's per, normally all the costs are associated on how much you borrow, a percentage from, uh, and, and the underwriters have the fee and, and uh, the buy and sell the bonds. I can't, I can't give you a cost just estimate without, I need to go do some numbers. And I can't just throw a number out of my head, unfortunately, for $5 million. I could figure, I could come back to you in a few minutes, but I can't just do it out of my head. Uh, and your options for payback on something like that or? As short as you want, or as long as you want. Uh, statutorily, I think go up to, depending on the instrument, thirty to forty years. But you could go anything less than that. Uh, seven years or less would be. A, you could do a tax note, which would be uh, uh, one option, which only would require one court action to borrow the money. If you went longer than seven years, you could do a certificate of obligation, which would only go up to the forty years, and then that would require a notice in the paper and waiting that type of thing, the, the notice period that I've mentioned before. Uh, so those are probably the two. You could do it less than seven years um, uh, or longer than seven years, you would need a, a notice requirement. So you're talking 45 to 60 days or 60 to 90 days to borrow the money time period. But there are a number of options out there. Yes, sir. Questions? Thoughts? Curiosity? You want to let him have a few minutes to put the put some I, figures I'd like to I can sit, submit that back to you and write your report by the easy and then you just sure. do it on my calculator and I can list all the costs involved. Okay. And estimates on what those would be. Right. Mm -hmm. Just five million? On a five million. Okay. I mean, from what from what we're talking about? 
if you did the additional 15,000 square foot in space two, I did it at 325 a square foot. That's 4,875,000. Or, yeah, if we're that close and just say 5 million to work around number, because I'm sure there's a surprise in there, some covered walkway. Yeah. So, or enclosed walkway. That take it up to 5 million pretty much. My question is on the 15,000 square feet that. Uh, that you have now as an expansion zone, um, that's not for two departments, that's for addition of what? That would get the balance of the departments that we, we contemplated from the beginning of the project. It's, it's more than two, though. Yeah, it's district card, planning card, that's two. treasurer, auditor, auditor, HR. So it would go back to almost yeah. the original design. It would be everything but the county attorney, he, he likes his office. The county judge over in the, the county courthouse. Judge, that, that was the last iteration and... I was in one of the plans, but out of the rest of them. Yes, sir. so that, that was the um, last thing <coughs> that we, we look at, um, taking those departments out and I think we had some efficiencies in some of our floor plans. Um, and making sure we're, we're not <coughs> too much future growth. We're, we had some future spaces we were being were built in, and there were some comments that we were building maybe too many future spaces into the plan, and some of those spaces were getting too big. <coughs> Judge, on, on that note, talking about departments, we the adult probation department is still in that Soda thing. Right, so, I rent I mean, down there. The, Right, that was excluded. So where would we put that? <coughs> well, then, you know, part of it is maybe we revamp the annex, bring adult probation down here, maybe bring road and bridge, or give them half the building. You know, I, I think we have, <coughs> we have some options to do those kind of things. Right now, we don't have any options. The only option with that, though, is this have you taken into consideration how much money is going to be to revamp this building? <coughs> oh, no. I mean, that, that's that's something that needs to be talked about along the way, but... Okay, so if you were talking about adding just district clerk and county clerk to the building like she was referencing earlier, then you're talking about, what, five to 7,000 square feet additional? I believe from our prior plans, that was, that the, was the square footage range we were talking about. Anywhere from so 2,000 to 2,500. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, one, that's one iteration we haven't drawn, which is clerks, mm -hmm. clerks in, but only one district court. Um, you, didn't you have them in one of your drawings before that? We did, but we had two district courts the district court and court. county court of law and then the commissioner's court special proceedings. So it had about four in that one? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I, I'm sorry, I must have not heard what you said to the judge's uh, question about originally this project started off at 35,000 square feet for seven. Seven and a half million. Seven, seven and a half million. We're, what happened to that? Is that out of the question? Can you not do it for that? Is that can you not fit in there? I mean, where where are we on all that? I think that was an optimistic number, um, and that based on the quality of the building we we've been talking about and the number of the spaces and so forth. So originally, it wasn't the same type of building that's proposed today? Uh, I, I don't think that was a prior realistic number. <laughs> so um, we can, if we want to get to that number, I think we'd have to make some, some tough choices. Um, with us we can make the tough choices. I'm just trying to understand what the difference is from today as opposed to the initial initial 
Yeah, because this is right. this yeah. one is Basically dated September twenty fifth of twenty seventeen, so it's not quite a year old, but it's almost a year old. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, it, this whole project started based on that information that we had at that time, and at that time, based on some of the prior floor plans and elevations that I've seen, I mean, it's totally different. I mean. Nobody said at that time that it couldn't be done. And here we are a year down the road, and we still hadn't scraped a, an ounce of dirt. And we're still going back and forth with what is the best plan and how to get it where we need to get it. I, I and think some of the site conditions are, have really escalated the cost of that big hill. Now we'll deal with that. That's put a, that's put a strain on the but wasn't that taken into consideration initially? No, we didn't have geotech reports at the time of that. So we just got a number based on gut feel. It was a goal. Was that explained initially? I think that was the, the goal of I understand that, and it was a good goal to have, but was he aware of all these other outside things that might come into play in that discussion? Sarah wasn't aware of the geotechnical challenges we had. So we didn't have a good number from the beginning. Yeah, I think it was, it doesn't give you the quality of the building that you're looking to have. Well. Is that just the cause of the geotechnical things? That it wouldn't be the quality of the building that we're looking at now? Um, I think that's one component of it. That increase in material was lost. Steel and, and even other building material from Harvey. Yeah, I understand that. No, I mean, that, but I don't that, know what percentage that is. But that's not, I mean, at that time, that wasn't even taken into consideration because it wasn't an issue at that time. At that time, we were asking, how much can you build a 35,000 square feet to these desires? And we were told $7.5 million, at least the information that I have. Yeah. Um, that's what this says. And here we are a year later, and we're, you know, we're doubling that figure and cutting the space down to 20,000 square feet, roughly. Ben, you had a number? No, well, what I want to oh. like to do is, I know Mary has some more money she's going to put toward the project, but the number's still flowing. Let me come back with like two and a half million to five million borrowing costs and break you the breakdown on all those and present it to the court and write. Right. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, okay. that's fine. And see, that's a, that's another issue. We're in this domino effect now where we're, you know, the, the our predecessors have been good stewards of the money for the most part and set this money aside. And now we're talking about having to go out potentially because we didn't have a good number initially, and borrow money, <coughs> and, and we're debt free. So I mean, I. I'm gonna finish that statement for you, if if I can add on to that. You say, and we're debt free. So, if we're debt free now, where does the money come from when we take on a debt to pay for it? No, I'm not saying, I'm saying to pay him back. We have to pay him. It's a, it's a, we have a dedicated line item that says we're going to pay 350000 a year or 500000 a year or 800000 a year until it's, it's like buying a house. I mean, do we have excess? She's saying, how are we going to cut the budget? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I get, I, no, I, I understand that loud and clear. Because at one time, I think we talked about 600 and something thousand a month. Was it a month, a, a year, a year? Every from soft months. money, from oil and gas, we talked about that. <laughs> soft money that never, that never materialized. Yes, sir. If you borrow, do you physically where the money came from? Where does it come from, or how are you gonna pay it back? 
how we're going to pay it back. And you would dedicate an, a, a, an interest in sinking fund, a new, a new tax dedicated to pay that first. Or the, the tax amount that we're charging right now, we could divide part of that up. Right, you could lower your, but you're going to pledge an INS tax if you borrow the money. And that money actually comes out separate and it's not subject to rollback. And so, uh, I mean, you could take, if, you're cent, if your tax rate's 50 cents, you, you could dedicate two cents or whatever it is to INS first. And so you still set the overall tax rate, but a portion of it would be dedicated to, to debt. You know what INS stands for? Interest in sinking funds, right? Interest, Interest in sinking funds, what they call it, INS. That's a sad sounding Interest name. Interest in sinking. sinking. Interest yeah. in, in sinking, yeah. And, you know, I mean, just making an observation, we're having another budget hearing Monday, and it's to discuss, you know, cleaning up some of the smaller things that we need to tweak in the budget to, to have a balanced budget. Can you imagine if we were having to determine how we're going to pay back six hundred thousand dollars next year, or the year after, or the year after? Uh, I hear you. Thank you. This has been done in the past to in, in, in two thousand and two or two thousand and three, when the four hundred thousand dollar renovation for the fairgrounds was done, there was a 2% tax dedicated to repaying that that uh, note, which the county actually didn't pay that back. It's the groups that stepped yes. up and said that they would Does do the it. the county still had to set the taxes yes, aside yes, for that? Yes, yeah, they have to do that. So it's not a new process. And then back in 83 or 87, whenever this was bought from FHA, the fairgrounds was bought. There was a one half of one percent tax set aside for that. Over the years, back when I ran in 2014, Bill Sullivan figured that that had generated 3.5 million dollars over the years, not counting the two two percent. You know, so. Oh, I understand. It's, it's, a, it's a concept that's been used in the past. I certainly understand that. It's. It's a concept that's been utilized, but we don't have to. We've got the money in the bank. Yeah. We need to build what we can afford to build without having to put any undue taxes on anybody, in my opinion. Well, I don't think the tax rate was raised back then when they did either one of those. It was just put into the budget. That's true, but there again, you know, we're already budgeted, you know. And sure. So it's, it's gonna look, we're gonna have to look at okay what can we take out for the next several years and I'm thinking it's going to be something like machinery and equipment or something I don't know at y'all's decision I will say with the new businesses that have moved into the county I don't know what that's going to do for our revenue stream the other, other thing that we have to take into account is how much we're spending on renovations and, and repairs for, for the buildings that we have. If we can eliminate some of those buildings, you're not going to have that cost also. Well, it doesn't sound like you're going to eliminate any of the buildings. Well, if you, add, if you add to this project, you will if you move them, some of those offices over there. Well, we're already talking about it, a adult probation coming over here. Yes. And then I think I heard the historical commissioner, somebody being over at the county clerk's office. So what are we eliminating? Well, that's what we have to look at. That's some of the things that we have to look at. The, the original plan, back when this all started, I was involved a little bit here and there. The original plan was historical committee going into the county clerk's office because it's only like six years difference between the courthouse. <clears throat> the the courthouse itself will always remain. There's we're, we hold three national registers. That bill will only increase over time. It's getting older. We're, we're doing some major repair this year it will always increase. This building here, um, 
you can renovate it. You can, we, and we discussed this in the committee, uh, building committee meeting last week, I believe. Uh, you're going to renovate this too to house some. Um, the only really buildings that you will be getting rid of will be the DA's office and the original plan and this is this might have changed because I have not been able to get to every committee meeting but I'm not on it so I try to make as many as I can um, it was the back half of road and bridge annex the old jail I believe that's the old jail correct that was going away because it's starting it's starting to flex and I'm having to tighten it back in every seven eight months um, sooner or later I'm gonna run out of adjustment in the screws okay I mean that's just point blank so in the original road and bridge was gonna stay DA is gonna leave and everything else would stand would stand because there was adult probation moving over here there was storage going to be here. Oh, and you lose, you lose uh, where I house stuff over at the old adult probation. Um, but we're going to lose that building because it's doing this, and there is no screws for that. <laughs> so you're going to lose one and a half buildings. Uh, my, my concern with this whole thing is, and it's not that I don't want a new building, it's just know your hidden costs. Um, you build a giant building over there and we still have these buildings over here. Everybody can say uh, they're going to be warrantied, uh, but the end of the time, end of the deal, yes, they're going to be warrantied, but you're still going to have to have staff over there. You're still going to have to have uh, maintenance over there, no matter whether it's warranted or not. Because now, you, you know, on recalls and stuff like that, it happens. And in, in this industry, we know that. So my thing is, if you could get to seven and a half million, see where the difference are, build what was on the contract, and see what the differences are between. The building he's proposing and the building that you guys can set forth, that would be where I would go. You're always going to have hidden costs in a new building. Always. There's there, there's no no way around that. Any building that I've ever been helped with engineering or, or just been the maintenance guru over it, we've always had additional costs. So I agree, but leave yourself some buffer for the additional cost. That's what worries me about this whole thing, is the additional cost coming after the building. Well, correct me, uh, or help me understand, what we're into with PGAL now is for architectural services and design. Is, are we, we're not, we didn't sign a contract <coughs> that we're going to build with PGAL. Or we're not a contractor. No. Okay. So, so you're bringing in contract. So I guess my bring suggestion. Bring plans that will go out for bid. Uh huh. That's where I'm going. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about building, you're building it with your contractors. When you talk about no. these, oh, yeah. so you just this is anybody that's going to go out for correct. bid. This will go to public bid. So what our our contract is for design services. Mm -hmm. We help you uh, with bidding, mm -hmm. meaning we. We help you put out the bid documents. We administer the bid uh, with your with your bid process. If there's a, we would have a bid meeting with contractors be invited. We do a sidewalk. I would go through all that, and then uh, when we get the bids in, we'd help you analyze those. Uh, so that's the bid services, and then construction administration services is we monitor the. The contractor who's awarded the public bid, we monitor their progress okay. through uh, the project. And ensure that we're we're your your eyes and ears to make sure the design intent is carried through in the field. You come out and watch watch that. How so, often is how often is someone from your office going to be there? 
we come out once a week for a weekly job site meeting with the contractor. So we, we tour the site, uh, we take a look at what's going on, we sit with the contractors and any owner uh, building committee staff and we look at the progress of the work uh, and make sure that they're they're carrying out what we what we put in the contract documents. So to get to that point, we're here in early September. If we approve this plan or some semblance thereof that's close to it, I'd recommend we go out to bid at the beginning of the year. That's a good that's a good bid time. I think to get to a bid, uh, to go through the to finish up the construct construction documents and make sure we get the buy-in from everybody. Um, that would be, be near the end of the year. Uh, it's not a real good time to bid uh, through the holidays. So I think beginning of the year would be, we get everyone's attention, uh, the holidays are done, deer season's done, contractors are eager to, to build their first year with a new job. So we'd, we'd be on track and we'd, we'd start advertising now to get interest. Um, if we have a, a plan set and approved, um, we I help get word out to the the, uh, the construction trades and be advertised, and um, I start to field calls all the way through. Hey, what, what kind of project is that? And I do a write up that gets advertised to help uh, get uh, contractor interest. And we get contractors from Houston. We get contractors from College Station, and some from Minnesota. In the area. So, well, Mr. Rosen, uh, Rosenberg. Rosenberg. Um, at what point, according to whatever document, I mean, uh, instrument we use, do would you start the project? I mean, process. Is it prior to the first of the year? I mean, it's to me, it has to have public input, whichever way we go, because these these are public funds and. Um, whether it be certificate of obligation, I heard you say a tax note. Tax note. It does it have to go to the public? It's not required for a notice. The instrument is not required for a notice in the paper. I mean, you're going to publish your commissioner's court meetings and all your plannings and agenda items and stuff that's going on. But to actually award the, the tax note, you do not. It does not require additional court action. But. Um, I guess I'm advocating public input because if you're going to, we, we've done, dealt with unrealistic numbers um, and we're dealing realistically and from a realistic point, you're going to have to have public input. So at what point would you start the process if he's talking about by the first of the year going out for bid? At what point do, would we start? So I mean, it depends on when you think you need the money when you want to borrow the money because you have some money you could spend first if you want to borrow and spend the borrowed money first do you want to spend your money first and then see what's left over once you sort of know what your contract amount is sort of when you want to borrow the money if you need to have enough funds you can't commit a 15 million dollar project with five million dollars in the bank so you have to sort of time it according with the bids coming in and when you want to when you need the money so if we went to bid in january advertising Probably the four week bid period, four to five weeks would be ample. Um, and then whatever time it takes to get the bid to then to contract. So you'd be looking at February of when you could give the contractor the notice to proceed. So just to clarify, how do you get paid? How do you get paid? I'm, I'm billing on a monthly. Um, draw off the bar by phase. Right. But once, if this is approved, how would you get paid in this process? Is it a percentage or is it a flat fee? Or? No, I'm, I'm based on our flat fee. Okay. I'm not, the, con, the construction cost goes up or down. I'm, You're flat. You're I'm, 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 I'm in my percent. So I, through design development, the construction document phase is, is what's left. Uh, I, have, I have a question, Judge. Uh, Commissioner Mount, are you the project manager? Mm, are you yes. going to oversee the project? Yes. Okay. That just wasn't stated. He said he was coming out once a week. The contractors after the bid, like 
I'm the project manager for the courthouse on my document. I just didn't know who was the project manager, and that would be you, mm -hmm. correct? Well, he's our resident engineer. That's right. <laughs> that's that's. I wanted to make that really clear. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to delegate some of that. To <laughs> I do that. <laughs> Both of you would be good on that committee. Yes. Yeah. I, I believe so. Me and Commissioner Mallet work good together. Mm -hmm. But and I then just, Commissioner just, Cox is on there to mediate and arbitrate between the two of y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll help however I can, Judge. <laughs> so I guess the decision at, at hand today is what size building do you want to build? Um, I want a 35,000 square feet for 7.5 <laughs> million. <laughs> Duly noted. Good now let's deal with realistic. That is realistic. That's what we were told. Apparently it wasn't. <laughs> oh, that changed. I can't change. Well, this is a workshop to discuss what our options are. I don't believe it's, uh, I don't believe the agenda. Review and discuss Justice Center design options from BGAL. That's all we're supposed to do today I guess we can get some another drawing with the two clerks in here as well and then maybe discuss um, would the clerks be able to bring all the files and have a temporary for the I docket there, I think that there's a couple of different options uh -huh. um, your district clerk <clears throat> the majority of their files are going to be you just the current files. Or could it be, a lot of it be digitized things. where they have an office where it can be sent over there, or, you know, or, you know, actually have to go grab a piece of paper or. Well, until we go completely paperless, the judge is still going to have to sign that actual piece mm -hmm. of paper and it's still going to have the actual stamp on it. Before can that it's be digitized. something? Okay. Um, and the current district judges are paper copy judges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. Um, now they're both not running again, so, mm -hmm. so we don't know who's going to get elected in. Um, I know that my judge would love to go um, to paperless. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, you do twice the work. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, you go digital, but you still have the paper files, you do twice the work, but you've also got that backup copy, sure. but then you have that backup copy to store. Doesn't mean you always have to have it with you, but when, <clears throat> when you've got your judges in one building and your clerks in another building, like I said, I could keep a runner busy all day long, um, you know, with files going back and forth. And there's a delay in processing because I don't, you know, I'll let them stack up through the day and then I'll bring everything over at the end of the day as opposed to everything happening at once simply because it's two different buildings in two different directions. Sure. Your county clerk, they have real property records which are not necessarily going to need to be in, the court. in this justice building but is that going to be more confusing for the public, you know? Go to the county clerk's office, well, which one? Um, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, your district clerk, the majority of their stuff is going to need to be in the building that's closest there. Um, you know, but there is Or could the options, district clerk be over here and then the county clerk have a satellite or a hotel type office? Or are you still going back and forth to the county It's the files that you need, though. I mean, it's it's act, the actual files. So, yes, mm -hmm. it's a paper document that gets signed. Mm -hmm. And then we have to take that paper document to the clerk to file stamp it and then get our copy and take it back and enter it in the system. So if they had that satellite it. office there, could they do that stamping? And If the files are there, but... We don't necessarily bring all the files with the docket. To the court, or you're, could that it's happen? not just when you're in court that you're working on these cases. Okay. You're working okay. on these cases all day, every day, out of the blue. A case that hasn't been on on the docket, that hasn't been moved, that will have something you filed on it, and you take action, you know, that day as soon as it comes in. But it might be three or four months before it actually comes into court. It's just that constant behind the scenes paperwork flow that that not everyone's aware of. So it's continuous, constant work on these files all day, every day. Okay. Okay. And, and some of it goes to the judge, and some of it just comes to me. Some of it's setting requests, um, you know, to get onto a court docket, um, and then getting those notices sent out. Some of it requires a judge's signature. 
um, on the document. Some of it's our cases. Some of it is the 4D judges, um, your CPS and your AG court judges that need uh, Judge McLean to countersign what they've signed because they don't have full authority without his signature. Um, different things like that. We have a lot of eminent domain going on right now. And so while we don't actually hold that court, it's the judge's signature that um, you know, moves all of those cases along and moves them forward. So it is a consistent need to have the clerks in the files in a close vicinity. I think that we need to review some of the past plans because we had some, I mean, we've cut from all of the offices to the down to the yeah. district yeah. clerk's offices mm -hmm. and included them. And now we're down without the district clerk. I mean, how many times do they have to draw it's basically the same thing without us looking at it and maybe just saying, oh, it had two hallways here, and, you know, um, because you're talking... 15,000 square feet, and if you're talking 2,500 for, I mean, uh, 5,000 square feet for the district clerk and the county clerk, then you still have 10,000 square feet. Um, just maybe deciding as a whole with the court what, what we really want to do mm -hmm. by just going right now and reviewing the plans that. Well, there's going to be a little bit of difference because, drawn, because, of, because the, of the courtroom. Yeah, because of the courtroom. But for the most part, it would be similar except for that I guess uh, well, that, that, especially if we had the because there was a, a a version that had just the courts DA and uh, the, uh, the county clerk and the district mm -hmm. clerk yeah, it had another that, right? that's it mm -hmm. I just wanted to follow up on what I was saying before you were asking mm -hmm. about you know as we move into digitization um, we're still going to have paper files in our open cases but I do want to clarify uh, very much that as soon as that case is closed, that paper file can be taken to another building mm -hmm. and it can be pulled back out so later. Um, that on. digital copy can be reprinted if it needs to be reprinted. It is the new paperwork that's coming in sure. that we're utilizing. So I know when we're looking at these plans, we're taking the square footage that we're using nice now, where we too. have every and file imaginable in our buildings, um, open, closed, and we don't necessarily need all that room. Our old case files, um, those files are, there's something that you could go to. Once it's digitized, it's very rare, Mr. Paskett, unless I'm wrong, it's very rare once it's digitized that you're actually gonna have to go back to that paper file. Um, so if we have room to move those cases, and once we have all of those digitized, then that takes down the actual live case amount of room that you need in these offices in the new building. You don't necessarily need as much room as you currently have so we in, could, that, a in that case, to reduce but that then we're projecting space. for future growth instead of future digitization and more technology, yeah. you know, taking all of that growth. Instead of going forward, we it should, should be, be going backwards. Yeah, we smaller. should be moving towards being straight digitized in the future, not needing more and more files. Look at that. Did you catch that note, from Michael? Yeah. For the potential for, the, for those offices. I think if we get that, this could be changing. And just in more understanding the court cases, I was thinking, you know, paperwork, you could bring all the paperwork you need, but if it's a day to day situation, it's not necessarily during court. But those offices need to be close together. Um, if you could put the district and county clerk's offices in there with potential for reduced spacing for storage. Yeah, there were some prior plans still had um, paper the, the copies. Large, storage, yeah, the large, large like storage. And that can be, and that can, well, files. yeah, we'll yeah, for there. But a lot of the older stuff can be stored somewhere else. Mm -hmm. They can still go get get it, and, exactly. and it's not nearly as often it has to happen. And it'll, it'll reduce quickly. Your live files will reduce quickly once you have a courtroom that your county court at law judge can hold court every single day of the week because yeah. we're not competing with courtrooms. Then that the amount of open cases goes down drastically because we're moving them hopefully as quickly as they're coming in, instead of continuously dealing with the backlog. I mean, I think we're seeing a lot of that already, just in the last year, how many more cases were moving and um, increasing court, you know, by four to eight <coughs> times as much, depending on your case type, 
you know, we're really moving through these pieces now, but we still can't keep up with what's being filed. Mm -hmm. When we have court rent available and we can hold those courts and don't get kicked out of the There'll courtroom, be a lot that we need twice space. a month for jury trials that may or may not happen, um, then we'll really be able to move through even, even quicker, even more. Michael, in some of the drawings that you've provided us, there you have some, I don't recall the numbers, but you have like a 36,000 or 37,000 square foot layout that has the two district courts it in it. Two district? Yeah. I, yeah, I guess sorry. one thing, it had two district courts, county court of law, yep. and also had a larger commissioner's court. I guess what I'm asking or what I would ask is can you take one of those without having to do a whole lot of redesign and everything and take one of those district courts out see how you can fill it up you know with the additional 15,000 feet or whatever it is mm -hmm. get us back to what that 36 37,000 overall square footage is going to be because if you can if we can get bids where we can do it for three at 350 then I think with what money we have available, we're only looking at a $4 million loan. And I say only a $4 million loan, but it's not like we're trying to borrow as much as we already have saved up. It's not like when we're look, not, it's not like when we're talking about that $18 million project. Right. Yeah. I, I'd and like to say Because I'm, I'm, I mean, again, I'm only one, but the more we talk about it, the more we think about it, I, I think it's important for us to, to test every option and if there's any way we can get as much over there in the new facility as we possibly can, I think that's important to our future success of this county as we anticipate growth and everything else. And I'm personally... And costs are going to do nothing but go up. Yes, so sir. And costs are going to do I, nothing yeah. but go and up. And I'm personally, so. I mean, it just... The way I do my personal finances, I'd love to be able to pay for a house and buy it outright, but I didn't. So I put down what I could, what I could live with, and I put it in my budget, and I made that a budget line, and then I got the thing paid for. I'm not looking at a 15-year note, but I think with us being responsible with our tax dollars, conservative in how we spend, I think we've got some options, and, and we need to exercise those options. So, Michael, I'd like to look at, again, uh, another plan uh, and I would hope that you don't have to redo the whole thing but with having the one district court having the county court having the commissioner's court over there getting the district clerk the county clerk and if we've got room to put in the auditors and the treasurers so be it okay um, I mean does that yes I think that kind of in line yeah, yeah, option, I was thinking of having the option with, with just the courts and the and the uh, clerk's offices and then also I was going to ask him to you know come Put back that with that extension and yeah. see see um, what our numbers or what our square footage numbers can you've be. had this plan with three courtrooms if you this is 27,000 square feet it has the district clerk and the county clerk mm -hmm. I don't and know it, what the square can, footage is of this down. extra courtroom but that could easily translate into auditor treasurer uh, at 27,000 square feet, uh, you know, and it was option F and it came out to be 10 million. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the numbers changed a whole lot, but even at 27,000 square feet, it looked like you had to, all of your district clerks and all of that offices, and then you had this extra courtroom that could be revamped into something. Mm -hmm. Well, there's space. Office. I mean, whatever. Yeah, yeah we could. We need to lay it out a little better than that. I would think. Yeah, but I'm yeah. saying, even at 27,000 square foot, you had all of that, mm -hmm. and it was 10. I know you hate, hate to keep going back to the drawing board, but you know, this is a big decision for us, yeah. and we need to make it right. We need to make it right, and we're we're prepared to get the plans drawn to your satisfaction and goals. I'm saying it don't have to be um, 35. So it seems what I've been hearing through the different iterations there was one thought we just want to be square at um, the eight million and not borrow any so really the, the big decision is if we borrow some um, what de what departments can we get for maybe another four million to five million mm -hmm. and, and I can show you 
schemes to, to look at those departments in the building as such with less one one district courtroom. Michelle, can I cut you? And you also have the issue of how much money will be returned at the end of the year. That issue's coming up. I mean, you could, if you could impress upon elected officials to not spend money for and, and hopes to get a bigger budget the next year, you'd have some dollars that were coming back. Yeah. Um, and I wanted just to make the point, you obviously want elected officials to have what they want or what they need and project for growth and whatnot, but you all are the bottom line. You say whether this, we can do this or we cannot do this. Yes, sir. And the thing that John Wren, you know, mentioned, certainly from John's perspective, that has validity, but that's y'all's call. That's not necessary for the sheriff or for him to say that. I certainly think a cinder block with a metal roof, you know, seven-foot cinder block is going to protect them from the weather and protect the people around them. We're not talking about adding AC for prisoners. They got rec, rec yards that don't have yeah, AC I, in them. I, I mean, so, so I, I'm thinking, I'm just saying to you as an example, there may be things that you see on there that you as a court say, I'm sorry, elected official, but we're not going to be able to do this. And you shouldn't feel sorry for it. Yeah. I feel sorry about it. I feel badly about it. It just may have to be the case. Mm -hmm. Like whacking the county attorney out of the building altogether. That's just fine. And the county judge out of the building altogether. <laughs> That's just fine. Hey, I like my neighbors where I am. I'm not sure I'd like my neighbors <laughs> if you move me over there. <laughs> Michelle. One thing that I just wanted to mention, since we have a lot of new faces um, here than when this first started as well, is something that Al and I kind of took on, um, if, what, three years ago? Was looking at, you know, the buildings and where we're at with some of the buildings that we have and looking for different options at that point. Um, the old adult probation building, um, we had somebody come in and look at what it would take to repair that building to be feasible to get another 10 years out of it. And we're talking, there's holes in the concrete where you can clean wash who's coming down the street, you know, um, here on 90, different cracks, rain, leaking, you know, and then the aftermath of that in that building. It was a quarter of a million dollars and to get what they estimated would be another 10 years out of that building. Now, in comparison, when you look at uh, the Road and Bridge building, which is having even worse issues with the walls, um, and, and the narrowness of it, you've got even more concrete. So, you know, I'm guessing that's gonna be twice as much. Um, so you do have a lot of costs in these buildings that you might not be able to maintain when you're looking at what we're gonna do with these people, I think that's something that definitely needs to be considered as well, is what happens if we lose this concrete wall, where are we gonna office these people? Is this something we're gonna bring in a different modular building and it's gonna be only pay in that? You've got some of those considerations as well to think about where something like this isn't gonna solve the problem of you know potentially a million, million and a half, two million dollars, coming right down the path in, in buildings that just aren't feasible to spend that much money repairing to get 10 years, you know? Commissioner, you had something you were going to say? Yeah, I was going to just I, I reiterate what John said about the, the air-conditioned walkway. I don't agree with that. I mean, I, I worked in the prison, and we didn't have any walkways out there that were even covered out there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we walked in the rain. and. Uh, I, you know, there's no, if you're going to have a roof over it and walls there, there's no need to have that air. Working on the inside or the outside? Both. My, Michael said it was a 40 <laughs> second walk, right? So 40 seconds, we do that around here when it rains. Yeah. yeah. But, but this is, that's the least of our discussion yeah. right now. But that's so, 100,000. But I understand, I understand the point. We got, we got to take a look at all of these kind of things and yes and no. But. I have one other question. All right. Can this building be built prefab? Prefab? <laughs> the kind of building, not prefab, you can't just, at this scale, build it in a factory and plop it down. What you would be in the range of is pre-manufactured metal buildings, which is uh, maybe similar to what you have here. It's pre-engineered metal, metal siding, metal roof. Not concrete? Um, uh, you mean like tilt walls? or tilt walls. Like like St. Joseph, what 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 am I calling that? It's, it was a. Um, I mean, that's a large building. It was a design build. 
I believe it's a tilt wall construction. Yeah. Tilt wall. Tilt wall is another version. It it's, it tends to look a more industrial mm -hmm. than uh, a courthouse, which I liken to having brick on it and some architectural. I statement. mean, we like having a lot, but we're trying to build enough space, you know, for mm -hmm. everybody, mm -hmm. and that was just an option. I thought you. We can look at. We might could explore. If, if that's what. I mean, you have a large building like St. Joseph. Uh, when you enter College Station, and it's a pretty large building that they brought in on a truck and still set the walls up, and it's concrete. It kind of looks like a box, but I mean, <laughs> it looks like a. Box. I don't know. It's tilt wall can box. technology has it got to the point oh, where well, it can be pulled might have to, to be in a box. look like brick mm -hmm. or anything like that. We got a courthouse already. You can apply brick to it, <laughs> and. But then you're probably at the same about the same price as you would be with a concrete bad metal building as well, or is it? Uh, I'd say metal building is cheaper than a tilt wall. Mm -hmm. I think goes prefab metal building, tilt wall, and then steel frame and brick veneer. Mm -hmm. I mean, even a potential with the with the prefab metal building with with brick facade or brick at least highlights or something. On it. I mean, I guess right. we can look at that as well. Are you comfortable with our request, or do you feel like you've gathered enough? The two requests I heard is that we're going to look at a floor plan that adds the district, the, the two clerks' office to essentially this plan, and then a, th a second option, which would be uh, a larger building with all the departments, as efficient as I can get it, no high density storage. Um, and no second district courtroom. Correct. Is that right? And is it a value to say what number you're looking for? I mean, he, he can do the math. Um, are you saying 10? I mean, what are you saying? You mean money-wise? Yeah. Oh, well, I think it, it kind of is what it is. is you can shrink it down to <coughs> square footage. It's a matter of square footage. Right, well, that's what, I, but that's what yeah. I'm saying. Is for you guys, it's a matter of the number. Uh -huh. So, and it may be is what it is for him, yeah, but he'd have a lot of direction, I think, if he yeah. said, this is the number or this is the range and make it tight and make it as efficient as you can and some people can get in some people can't get in i think that number needs to be below 15 15 okay. million we certainly Mary, what's the number well as of 9 30 8.7 17 we had 8.7 million now it's too early because we close the books the end of this month, but then we do two months worth of throwing bills back, you know, that come in that were dated for September. So it'll be, it'll probably be December before I can have a pretty, a very good idea of exactly how much money is going to be left in the, uh, in fund balance this year. So do you anticipate below $8 million? No. How about below 8.5? No. 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 Okay. No, we have the 8.7 now. So I'm expecting an increase. that we will increase that. Okay, but as we're talking about it today, we don't know that number. No, we no. don't know that number. It's at least 8.7. So. I mean, I, under, I hear what you're saying, Judge, but our number is 8.7 at this point. Okay. I mean, can we get both? Can you get both? Yeah. Can we get... I mean, I, I, we, to my knowledge, we've not seen anything come in under 10. We've got this at 8. Yeah, this one is. This, okay. this plan here is under. With the exception of that. No. This one's 8.7. At four hundred dollars a square foot, it's cheaper than that at three fifty. Yeah, four hundred is a conservative. I don't want to be low bidder, low estimator at bid day, and then we, we've gone through all the detailed drawings and we, we come in at a, that building at ten million. Then that's then we have to regress and redraw and go out to bid again. I think realistically, 
I'm like Al, you're gonna always run into uh, bridges or other things you have to look at. So if you're just looking at a building for eight, Philip, I don't I don't see it happening. Well, this is like I said, this is a conservative number with contingencies put in there. Uh, what what percentage of contingencies you put in? Five percent in there. Five percent. So I mean. But then, okay, one other question. Even though we're looking at building the building, don't we need to take into account if we're going to go out for money? If you still got buildings that have to be renovated and mm -hmm. built, wouldn't you look at the whole picture? We need to look at the whole picture as far as what other buildings, if we're going to move anybody, what, you know, that renovation cost and everything else. So. <laughs> Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you. Commissioners, anything else at this point? Michael? I'm good. I'll, I'll get back to some of the last ones and touch base with Commissioner Mill. Yeah. I'll get your cost estimates on two and a half to five million. Probably about 90 days, Commissioner Walker, to, from when you think you're going to need the money, and I can get the, and that provides time for notice and paper and all that. It's about 90 days. About 90, 90 days. To start the process. But we would certainly use our capital that we have first before we go borrow money. I would think. Yeah. All right. Is there a motion? Move to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? There's a motion before the court from Commissioner Mallet to adjourn a second by Commissioner Walker. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. It's 102. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 I'm sor